Hello chaps and chapesses, and this week we're going to talk about 10 things for a fly fisherman to do while stuck at home. There does come a time, such as now in fact, where we cannot actually go fly fishing. And this can be a bit of a problem for some of us. It is an obsession. It is something that we love to do, and we struggle when we can't do it. I find that during these times, it's important to keep a positive mental attitude and to think about things which we can do while we can't actually fly fish. If you've got a long period of time where you cannot go fishing, use this downtime to actually come out the other side with a new skill. You can also use this time to fine tune your equipment, go through all your stuff. So without further ado, let's go through 10 things that you can do as a fly fisherman if you're stuck at home. The first thing that I tend to do is if I cannot go fishing, I want to watch fishing. I like to fish vicariously through others. Those who are either being able to go fishing or have recorded fantastic movies of their adventures. For this, my first stop is normally YouTube. YouTube is a great resource, and for those of you who haven't discovered, for example, the Aardvark McLeod YouTube channel, then I would urge you to go and check that out. But there are many sources of YouTube videos on a huge number of different subjects, uh, another way of learning new skills, tapping into the minds and information of others who know far more than we do. Other than YouTube, there are in fact some dedicated internet-based fishing channels, such as Fishing TV. All of these are a great source of movies, uh, tips and tricks, and various other forms of entertainment which will keep us going through this tough period of time. The second thing that I really love to do when I cannot go fishing is to read about fishing. Yes, there are these amazing things called books, and they still contain an enormous amount of information, often written by those fantastic pioneers of our past. Huge amounts of information can be learned and inwardly digested from these tomes of wisdom. If you, like me, have been collecting various fishing books over the years, sometimes you've bought a load of books and haven't had actually a chance to sit down and read them, this is a prime opportunity to actually pull those out and go through them. And you will learn an enormous amount and it'll get you excited for when you can go fishing. The next thing, which never fails, is to plan another day's fishing or a trip. This can be hugely entertaining. I have found if there are downtime that I want to be looking at the next destination or the next place I want to go, the downtime is the perfect time to start researching. Uh, it's a perfect time to call someone like us, for example, start thinking about that next trip that you've been wanting to organize, get it on the books, and then you've got something to look forward to. It also gives you a chance to start preparing in advance. So you can look at kit lists and equipment lists and see what you have and what you are going to need to get, which is obviously very important. Having something to look forward to is paramount when you have large quantities of downtime. Item four on my list is to start going through my fly boxes. Over the course of a season, whether it's salt water, fresh water, I do find that my boxes tend to get completely annihilated. I've probably been pretty bad about sticking wet flies back in boxes, which are almost certainly gone rusty now, not good drills. And this is a really good time to pull out your boxes, go through them all, pull out all the dead flies, get rid of them safely, of course, and to take stock and see what you're gonna need, because this is also a great time to be thinking about which flies you're gonna need for the coming season, check out which patterns are going to be the next new pattern, which is obviously going to make all the difference, and to get your hands on some. And this is a really good time to stock up. Make sure that you've got everything you need for the coming season and for the next time that you can go fishing. On the back of that, it's probably time to pull out the fly tying kit. If you've got time on your hands, this is a perfect time to pull out the vise, pull out the thread, and in my case, make a complete mess of things, which is great fun. In all seriousness, it's a really good time to tie flies, stock up your boxes, and if you don't tie flies, this is a really great hobby that you can get into and becomes almost as totally time-consuming as fishing itself. It can become a complete obsession, 
And the great thing about tying your own flies is that you can tie them exactly how you want them. There are endless fly tying tutorials which you can find on our YouTube channel and many other YouTube channels. People who've done fantastic step-by-step -step tutorials which will guide you every single part of the way on tying up these phenomenal patterns. The next item on my list is going to be cleaning and maintenance. Now this is something that I've always been uh, pretty keen on. Uh, I've certainly harped on about it in the past actually if you if you check here I'll leave a link to a little video that I made about tackle maintenance but invariably you'll come back off a trip you may not have cleaned it as well as you would have liked to before you left and this is a prime opportunity to make sure that all your kit is in good order and that you have not put your rod handles away wet or got a little bit of mold on them or anything like that clean it all off I like to use a bit of armor on a cloth get a little bit of silicon coating on all my rods and rings and I also like to clean all my lines maintain all my reels make sure that they have enough grease inside and that they are all in full working order before the next season there's nothing worse than turning up at your next destination to find that actually you hadn't checked your reel and it's completely seized up and is utterly useless it's quite often a very long way to the nearest tackle shop Another one that I tend to do, which I don't think a lot of people do, is practice my knots. That can involve tying up leaders, uh, if you're going to be heading out on a permit trip, or you need some bump head parrotfish leaders, or you want to even try making your own furled leaders. This is a prime opportunity to make leaders and practice your knot skills. The more you practice, the easier it will come to you when you actually need to do it in a slightly time sensitive moment. Then perhaps you might want to try a little indoor fly casting. Indoor fly casting, you hear me say? What are you talking about? I know that there are practice rods that you can get with bits of thick wool in which you can use to cast around. I've often used one in the office and cast it at Charlotte, just for fun. But there are other ways of doing it inside. You can actually take the tip section off a fly rod and you can cast up and down corridors or casting at bowls or plates and actually just that constant casting motion just keeps everything flowing and you will be able to improve your accuracy. It's all about muscle memory. The more you do, your muscles will remember and the better you will be when you actually have to use it. Item number nine on my list is a serious case of gas. Gas, you say? Gear acquisition syndrome. We all have it. All fly fishermen who say that they don't have it are lying. And this is another prime opportunity to research the next piece of kit that you want to get, which is obviously going to make all of the difference on the next trip or the next day out. As you know, he who dies with the most toys wins. And lastly, I think it's very important to maintain a positive mental attitude. I know that sounds weird, but as a fly fisherman, who is stuck inside, it can be trying sometimes. You know, you've read all the magazines, you've read a lot of books, and you're desperate to get out there. But you've got to keep a positive mental attitude. And by that, I mean do things. Don't just sit around. There's lots of stuff that we can be getting on with. It's really important to set yourself tasks and to go off and to achieve those tasks. If we've got a lot of downtime, it's really important to come out with new skills, new toys, new books, new inventions at the vice. These things will keep us occupied during the downtime and they will pay dividends when you can go fishing. As always, I hope you found those tips useful. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next one.